If you're a DevOps in a mid to large size organization, I'm sure you have mixed infrastructure in place. Even though your organization and team wants to move towards cloud native, I'm sure you still have tons of VMs around, be it AC2, VMware or other. Maybe a cluster you created somewhere to help a development team get started with their project. And as you evolve, it is common to get requests from other teams to use maybe EKS or GKE clusters because they prefer that cloud provider. As a DevOps engineer, you dedicate a lot of your time maintaining this complex mixed infrastructure and try to evolve it towards new technologies. On the other side of the equation, you have infrastructure that is built and maintained using Terraform, for example. But as things evolve, you now want to try tools such as Pulumi, or if you are moving fast, maybe you now want to try Argo, Flux, or some sort of GitOps tools. But let's be real. Even though you're experimenting some of these new tools, you still have some good old Jenkins pipelines in place or whatever other tools you may have for CI, right? Evolving your infrastructure so applications can be deployed faster is always a great initiative, but each implemented tool fundamentally changes how your developers deploy their applications across the different infrastructures you have in place. The way Developers will use Terraform to deploy EC2 is very different than the templates used to deploy on K8. That's the same scenario with Pulumi. If you look at GitOps, then it further increases complexity and difference in templates and approach. And it's the same thing with Jenkins, completely different. Because of that, you end up spending a considerable amount of time helping developers create and maintain different definition files for each infrastructure and for each pipeline. And as you evolve, this increases the load on you, the DevOps engineer, considerably. And the sad reality is that the so-called shift left never properly happens because it becomes extremely hard for your developers to self-serve when it comes to application deployment and management. I'm sure you still end up involved in the application support. But even if you manage to create some custom scripts and try gluing all these things together with the goal of having applications deployed faster, you have to remember that deploying the application is just part of the process. For your developers to be effective, you have to provide monitoring and now you have to use different tools and methods to give monitoring to applications in different environments. Policies are a huge topic, and keeping applications secure across mixed infrastructure is no small task. And if you get this wrong, it can seriously harm your company and impact your role. Deploying applications is not enough. You need to enable developers with an easy way to integrate their apps with tools such as Slack, PagerDuty, or others, so they can properly observe and support their own applications to reduce the burden on you, the DevOps engineer. And last but not least, you need to be able to audit and report on applications, policies, RBAC, and more, so you can be on top of everything that happens and enable a DevSecOps model in your team. So the questions are, how do you build a standard application definition? So you're free to move from VMware to Kubernetes or from EC2 to GKE without impacting the developers. How can you have Terraform, Pulumi, regular CI pipelines, and even GitOps all using the same definition so you can move and change tools and your developers will use the same definitions across them, freeing up your time? And last, how can you implement an application operational framework that as applications are deployed, the components listed before, such as security audit monitoring and others, are automatically included, no matter which mixed environment you have. Wouldn't it be awesome to have that in place? So you can scale infrastructure, move to Kubernetes, adopt GitOps, and others while you improve developer experience in your company, you improve security, and you don't have to handle mixed monitoring for apps across hybrid infrastructure and more. And that's where app ops comes in. Implementing that standard application definition and including the required operational aspects to applications automatically. Let's see that app ops model in action. All right, so let's see what we have here. I have in front of you my Shipa Cloud account. If I look at it, I have no applications right now. And I have three policy frameworks. Or better saying, I have four in this case. But let's pay attention to three. Dev, prod and QA. 
these policy frameworks are bound to two clusters. One is a GKE cluster. So my GKE cluster has two policy frameworks bound to it, dev and QA. And my AKS cluster has my policy framework prod bound to it. Each policy framework has its own definitions defined with use policy as code that you can learn more about here at Chipo. But the goal is now great. I have these mixed infrastructure in place with different policies that are connected to Shipo. And now I have different infrastructure as code providers that I want to use to deploy my applications. I have here with me, I have a Terraform example. I have a Pulumi example. And this one, I have Argo CD example. So how can we actually see the same definition being pushed and deployed? And at the same time as discussed, I get the batteries included, monitoring our back and everything, right? So let's do it. Let's maybe start with our Pulumi provider. So if I open up my Pulumi provider, you can see that I have a Pulumi app definition um, here not taking into account the boilerplate from a Node.js perspective and, and Pulumi and, and importing the libraries. I'm actually creating my application here and I'm passing variables such as the name of my app, Pulumi app one. I have my framework. I'm going to deploy to my dev policy framework. And the team owner of that application is going to be Shipa team and it's going to be description Pulumi app. It's a simple app, so I'm just going to be deploying this Docker image. I'm going to take into account or assume that your CI pipeline already built the image, ran test, and put that image on somewhere, Google Container Registry, Docker Hub, or so on. And let's say I'm, I'm using the infrastructure as code tools directly, but these infrastructure as tools, uh, as, tool called, um, uh, as code tools can be embedded into your CI pipeline in different ways, right? So here I'm creating and deploying my application. Keep in mind, the way I define my app, name, framework, team owner, description, and here how I deploy. Easy, right? And this dev framework, policy framework, is actually bound to a GKE cluster. Looking at this, your developer does not know or is not aware, it doesn't really actually need to care that it's deploying to Kubernetes. So let's see. If I just do Pulumi up in this case, I can use a dev stack that I have in place. I'll say, yes, create and deploy my application. So I'm now using Pulumi, defining my application using Node.js, or you can use Python or Go, for example, and I'm getting that deployed on Kubernetes and my developer, or my developer is doing it, and my developer doesn't even know it is Kubernetes. My developer is not creating Helm charts, Kubernetes manifests, and so on and so forth. If I look on Shipa now and go back to my application page, I have my Pulumi app one in here. And directly here, both my developer, myself as a DevOps engineer or a DevSecOps or an SRE team, they can quickly identify who owns that service or who owns that application. You can see things such as the plan that it's consuming or, or limits in terms of resources. You can see if there are any environment variables that were defined or any other C names added. And as this application starts then getting traffic, you see transactions, resource consumption, you can see how the application is scaling. Your developer can now see your, um, can see the security um, reports, your DevSecOps as well, can see the life cycle. So everything that happened to the application and the log associated to that, your developers can plug these into their incident management tools and your developers, even though this application is deployed on Kubernetes, your developers can quickly identify, here's my image, and here are all the abstractions and objects that Shipa automatically created for me. The same thing on the network side. Great, so now I deploy in a standard way and a standard definition that I don't even know there is Kubernetes in there. Let's go back to our terminal. I have my Terraform example here if you're part of a large organization, I'm sure you have a lot of Terraform in place. Um, I can get my, visualize this, 
And here you can see that aside from the Terraform boiler, boilerplate, I'm bringing the Shippo provider, I'm creating my application. Same exact thing. I'm defining my application, name, team owner, policy framework. And in this case, I'm pointing to production policy framework and I'm deploying my application image. Same exact thing as doing with Pulumi, no matter what. So you as a DevOps engineer now, you can move between Terraform and Pulumi and give your developers the same way to deploy their applications and manage their applications. If I come here with Terraform and Terraform init, Terraform apply, for example, Terraform will get that application definition, create the app, deploy the app, done. If I come in here, application deploy, exact same way, exact same interface to manage your application with everything, maps, security, lifecycle, and others. And last but not least, you wanna to move to GitOps, right? Um, and if you wanna to move to GitOps, like now you have to manage, you have to teach your developers to do customize or Helm charts, and you have to create a bunch of templates, boilerplate, and every time you scale Kubernetes cluster, you have to install monitoring, security policies, RBAC, and it's extremely hard on you as an engineer, as a DevOps engineer. So let's look at the definition here. I have an app create, and I'm doing exactly the same thing. You have the application definition, which is the name is GitOps app one. I have Shippa team as the owner, and I'm deploying to the policy framework QA, and I'm deploying the image here. Same thing. So if you move from Terraform to Argo or Terraform to Flux, you just give your developer the same thing. Your developer do not need to know you're running GKE, AKS, or if it's an EC2 or so on. And using Argo with the same definition, you can deploy to EC2. Awesome, right? So let's see, this is already on Git. I have it here and I can quickly come on Argo and say, I'll create my app. Okay, it's app one. This is the project. I'll do it automatic sync. Super simple setup, just so you see it working. If I get the path, okay, it's app one for my repo. And I'll do in cluster. Okay, the app is created and the app, the deployment, uh, return code already returned as successful. If we go back to Shippa, you're gonna see your GitOps app. So now you can move from Terraform to Pulumi or from Pulumi or Terraform to GitOps or from, from Jenkins to GitOps using the same definition, give your developers the same way, gives you DevOps engineer the freedom to move between these tools, move from EC2 and VMware to, to Kubernetes and you get this awesome interface where your developers, they can manage their applications, DevSecOps can audit the applications and SRE can understand everything that is happening to your applications in real time across dependencies, network, and more. I hope that was helpful.